class today, we're going to talk about law of sines and law of cosine. So when do we need to use these two law? Pretty much every time you want to um, solve for just a regular triangle. It doesn't have to be um, a right triangle because previously we, we, we deal with a right triangle with a right angle. So let's just talk about just any, any triangle um, like this. So you can see I label A, B, uh, the capital, um, I capitalized all the angles. So A, B, C here is for the angle. And we have little a, little b, little c for the side. So as you can see that b, little b goes, um, goes with big b right here. So you see the opposite, the angle that opposite to the side, that's going to be that pair. So I'm not trying to memorize when to use um, law of sine and when to use law of cosines. I know that many books say that you have to use it when you have uh, angle side angle or angle angle side or single uh, side angle side. It's just too much information. This is how I remember. Every time you have one pair, one complete pair, like sine of A over A. And then you have a little b or you have a big b or you have a little c or a big c. As long as you have one complete pair, that means you can use law of sine. So for law of sines, this is straightforward. Um, now law of cosine is a tough one. So you see right here, I just wrote down one uh, law of cosine and I pick a square. The way um, for me to memorize law of cosine is if I have the a square here, then the angle, it has to be the angle a, okay? So if I have b square here, the angle right here is going to be cosine of b, all right? So if you don't remember, you can always go back to the cheat sheet on, the, uh, on Canvas. Anyway, let's take a look at the first example that we have. So you can see right here for the first example, I have two angles, A and C, and I have little c. So you can see that I have one pair. If I have one pair, I get to use law of sine, right? And then you see right here, I have two angles. So to solve for uh, angle B, it's gonna be really easy. All you have to do is take 180. So let's let's try to do that first because that's the easy part. So for angle B, it's going to be 180. Subtract 75. Subtract 46. Is 59. So you have all the angles now, right? So now I can set up a pair. Um, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use C because C is given to you. So we have sine of 75 over 13. Now you can pick B or you can pick A. It really doesn't matter. We have to find both. So let's try um, let's try A. So it's gonna be sine of 46 over little a. And this is solving proportion. So all you have to do is cross multiply, right? Usually I set up the whole problems before I use my calculator. So uh, we have a times sine of 75 degree equals to 13 times sine of 46 degree. And then I saw for A, so A is going to be 13 times sine 46 divided by sine of 75 degree. And then you can use your calculator for it, right? Okay, make sure when you use your calculator, be careful with um, all the numbers. So I suggest that you put parentheses over everything, okay? So I'm going to try 
So I can try sine of 46. Oh, make sure your calculator is in degree because some calculators you set, up, set it up in radian and you're not gonna get the right answer in radian, okay? So sine of 46 is about 0 0.7193. And then I need to multiply that by 13, okay? And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna divide by sine of 75. So what I have is about 9.68, okay? Now, when you think about this, I can go back and write right here. And A is 9.68. Okay, you can see that 75, the angle is 75 and the side is 13. So if the angle is 46, um, which is lower, right? Then the side is 9.68, makes sense. So we can move on and then you can definitely use, I always use C for everything because C is given. So I can use sine of 75 over 13. And then this time I have sine of 59, which is B, right? And then I solve for B, okay? We're gonna go through the exact same thing. And there you have it. You get your triangle. All right, moving on. So right here, earlier we have two angles and one side, right? So now let's draw the triangle. I have, um, I have A is 58, B is 68, C is unknown. So let's just put C there. For A, the angle is 37. Okay, we don't have B, we don't have C. So let's put B and let's put, let's put C there. All right, now we do have one complete pair, which is A. So we can use sine, law of sine for it. So I have sine of 37 over 58 equal sine um we have uh we have b so we're gonna have to solve for b okay sine of b over 68 and like i said i can complete everything and then i can cross multiply and then we can solve for uh, big b so i have 68 multiplied by sine of 37 equals 58 multiplied by sine of b. That means I have to divide by 58 here, divide by 58, okay? So we're gonna use our calculator to punch in, okay? So what I have right here, I can multiply, I can uh, figure out sine of 37 uh, first, times 68 divided by 58. Okay, so if you multiply and you divide, you're gonna get 0 0.705576, right? Make sure you take arch sign. So that's how we figure out the angle. So now we have B equals, 44.9, I round it. It's actually 44.87, okay, but I round it. All right, so let's just go back to the proportion here. 
you see we have 58 and 68 for the sign for, for the side now up um, for 58 we have sign of 37 for 68 we have sign of 44.9 so it makes sense right okay after that since you have two angles, you can find a third one easily by subtracting from 180. So to find um, angle C, I take 180, I subtract 37, and I subtract 44.9. Okay. So 180 minus 37 minus 44.9, 98.1. So now you can go back and use A or you can use B to solve for C. I would say use A because A is given. So I'm going to take sine of 37 over 58. And then this is sine, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write down, so sine of C over C. But sine of C, we just found C. So C is, big C is 98.1 degree. Okay, and once again, you cross multiply. So C times sine of 37 degree equals 2. 58 times sine 98.1, okay? And then we divide by sine of 37. Divide by sine of 37. Then you got C. C is gonna be 95.4, okay? All right, moving on. Okay, so now you can see that we have application problems, right? So um, you can read the problem. They want you to find a distance from Karen to the base of the tree, which is X here. All right, and then they give you um, the angle, the angle, and one side, right? So the first thing I would do is, do you see we have two angles? So it's really easy to find the third one. I'm talking about that one, right? So if you take 180, you subtract 34, you subtract 80, you're gonna get the angle. 180 minus 34 minus 80, you get 66. Okay, now, we do have a pair, which is the 34 and the 74. So I can set it up. I can put sine of 34 over 74. We just found um, the angle that goes with X. So it's going to be sine of 66 over X. Once again, you cross multiply. So we have X times sine of 34 equals 74 sine of 66. And then I divide by sine of 34. I divide by sine of 34. Okay. So after that, if you use a if you use a calculator, it's going to be in feet, right? So it's going to be 120.9 feet. Okay, that's going to be x. All right, one more problem for triangle. Okay. So 
you see right here, let's just draw the triangle. I always draw the triangle. Okay, there's a reason I draw such a wide triangle like that because D is one, 120, which is larger than 90. Okay, and then we have A, so we don't have little b. We have A is 7. We have C is 34. Okay. So you can see the problem, right? The problem is we don't have one complete pair. Therefore, we have to use um, the, the, the law of cosine. So the first thing I would do is I'm gonna try to solve for B, okay? Because B we have, um, because we have the angle for B. So, let me just copy the law. So B squared is A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine of B. All right. So B squared, A squared is going to be 7 squared plus 34 squared minus 2 times 7 times 34 cosine of 120. Okay, from there, you use your calculator one more time. Be very careful. Okay, so um, if I use the calculator, I use a calculator, my answer for B is going to be 38. All right. And then I, would, I wouldn't use law of cosine again. So once I have one complete pair, I can use uh, law of sine. So I would take sine of 120 over 38. That's my complete pair. And then I have sine of A over 7. Okay, and then once again, you cross multiply. To solve for um, big A. 38 times sine of A is going to be 7 times sine of 120. And then I'm just going to divide by 38 here. I'm going to divide by 38. Okay. And then after that, you see that A is going to be 9.2 degree. Okay. It makes sense because 7 is such a small number compared to 34 or compared to 38. Therefore, the angle for A is quite small, 9.2. And then from there, since you have two angles already, you can definitely subtract those two angles from 180. That would be easier than use uh, law of sine one more time. If you want to use law of sine, that's fine too. But I would say this is easier. Minus 9.2 minus 120, that's gonna be C, okay? And there we have it.